Your challenge is to make the most enjoyable three-course family dinner you can. In teams, you will head to the supermarket where you will have to approach someone you would like to cook dinner for. <laughs> Each team will have $100 to cook a beautiful three-course meal for the family and for the judges. So, we're from MasterChef, and our challenge today is revolving around the family dinner. So, we're just wondering what your family's like. I have three kids. Three kids? Yeah, uh, Toby being the youngest, Lily being eight, and Maxwell being five. So. This could be a great family to cook for. Our challenge is actually to go into a family's house and cook the family dinner. How would you feel about us going to do that at your place? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so we found our family, a young dad at tour. What do you do for a living? I'm a chef by trade. He's a chef. Uh, Probably the only chef in Coles at the time. How do we do this? I don't know. If you were cooking a three course meal for your family, what would you like to see on that meal? Probably start something simple for uh, an entree there, maybe a tartar. For the mains, they love lamb. Yeah. Lamb's their favourite thing there. Dessert to be pretty easy there. Okay. Maybe it's sort of like um, it's some sort of fruit. After we've had a chat to Tura about what his family would love to eat, it's time to start shopping for our food. We're going to have enough money for lamb. Let's go have, have a look. Okay, let's have a look at the lamb. Back straps. I mean, if we got three of these, that would be OK, maybe. Well, it's still only $24. They definitely did ask um, what sort of foods we wanted. So wait and see. I'm looking forward to dinner tonight. Johnny, can I borrow you for a couple of minutes? Come on, you're the captain. What's the menu and who's doing what? OK, for the menu, we have uh, Spankor Bitter for the entree and we right. have Phil and Callum on that. That's nice. For the main, we have Pete, Marion and Jay and we're doing a lamb rotolo. So it's going to be flattened out and rolled up okay. with herbs and breadcrumbs. OK, lovely. Serving that with a cheesy mash. OK. And... Dessert? Dessert. We have Matt and Fee doing um, a layered berry trifle with a white chocolate mousse. OK. Is it a good menu choice? You're happy with that? Um, I think for a young family, it, I think it would be perfect. Oh, uh, this is not good. I looked down at the filo pastry and I realised that it's past its use by date. Obviously, we can't use this for our dish, so we're going to have to come up with something new. Why don't we make a spinach and um, ricotta frittata? We decide that with the spinach and cheese mix already made, the next best option might be a frittata with the ingredients we've got left. All right, can I chuck these in, guys? OK, guys, so we're aiming to get the lamb in the oven by half past. Shani's doing really well. From the minute we get going, she's organised the kitchen, so we've all got a little bit of space. And throughout the whole time, she's checking on everything. How are these going, guys? I'm just going to sprinkle a bit of parmesan, put them back in. OK. And um, let them get a nice crust on top. Everyone's pretty on task. Everyone's doing what they should be. The lamb's on the stove, so if, as long as we get cracking on that dish, I think we should be OK. Pulling the frittatas out, I mean, they're a bit hard to get out of the muffin tins. I mean, they're kind of stuck a bit to the sides. I knew we shouldn't have put breadcrumbs in the bottom of it. But I've tasted one. The taste is pretty good. So if it's all about taste, we'll be fine. Guys, you got one minute to go. I love the energy in here. I've never seen so many people in such a small space banging out food. In the, in the dying minutes, I'm, I'm help, trying to help Phil plate up the, uh, the entree. Looking down at it, a um, little bit concerned about the presentation. I think we could have done something more. Your time is up. Yeah. I think it looks awesome, yeah. though. All about how much you enjoy this food. They're cooking for you. Let's get the first dish out because I know that Maxwell is hungry. Taking the entree out is a bit nerve wracking. We did the best we could. It's very rustic, but you know, it still looks pretty nice. Hello, guys. We have some spinach ricotta mint frittatas with some um, minted yogurt dipping sauce. Thank you very much. So Jody said that you, you you've made um, frittatas before. Did you throw that out there? 
Yep. Was that one of the things you mentioned? I, thought, I threw that out there. Frittata's always a, a, a simple yet effective dish for the kids to eat, so... Is it better than yours, Jodie? As good. <laughs> I think as a, as a frittata, it's kind of missed the spot. It's very dense, it's very cheese-heavy. The red team's first dish, a spinach and ricotta frittata. Let's move on trying their main course. Yeah. Some of the things Tours said to us, you know, for main meals, he was saying the kids love lamb. Ooh, lamb. Mm, I can smell something good. It's lamb. <laughs> it's lamb? Yeah, it is. It's a lamb rotolo with mash and some greens. <gasps> Mashed potato. You like the lamb? Is it delicious? What you got? You know what it reminds me of? Something that you'd get in a good pub. Is lamb a bit of a family favourite? Yes. The kids love lamb. I can um, never buy enough of it. <laughs> it all comes down to budget. So are you, are, you, are you happy with what you've eaten so far? Definitely. Definitely. Are you blown away? Um, blown away? No, not really. Not, not yet. <laughs> I'm waiting for the dessert there. What's for the dessert? <laughs> <laughs> I think so far, safe without being not the ball out the park. Really, dessert needs to be a ripper. Yeah. All right. The point of this challenge was to please the family. I, I remember as a kid, you know, having something served up in a beautiful martini glass just made it a little bit more special. Oh, look, Max. Wow. It's taller than you. <laughs> It's a white chocolate mousse and berry swirl with some crumble and some praline on the top. Thanks, guys. No worries. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. As a dessert, that is rich, that is sweet, that's pretty good. How was it, Toby? <laughs> Got muscles. Is that from your dessert? Yeah. It's giving you muscles. <laughs> Lily? Good dessert, bad dessert, or great dessert? Great. Max, good, bad, or great? Very good. So has this dessert blown you away? It's blown me away to see that my kids are enjoying it there, so, yeah, definitely. They're happy, I'm happy. What is the challenge? There's two teams, and you're going to be cooking a family dinner of 14. Cook the best dinner, and you'll win. You're going to have to decide as a team what you're going to cook. But here's the kicker. Each team will get $204 each. That's the amount the average Australian family spends on food each week. You have four hours to plan and cook us that delicious dinner. You've also got to shop for your ingredients and get back to the MasterChef kitchen. Are you ready? Yeah! yeah. Look behind you. Big Master Chef class. That's awesome. Your four hours starts now. We have all our ingredients together. Go. Okay. And we run down to the cash register. Nice work. Chicken down. We've got so much flour. We've got like about five kilos of flour. We only need one of those. It is insane. There are doubling up of ingredients, not enough of that, too much of that. Stop. Stop. We have gone over. We're over our budget. The budget got blown before even half of our stuff had gotten through. We're going to have to cut back on something. The problem is, we think we all need everything. We can't go past $204. We need to get rid of some stuff. And that's when the chaos started. Get the prawns out. The prawns are too expensive. We don't have prawns. We need these. We've got the big blocks. They need cheaper. Oh, my yeah. God, money. After sifting through so many items and putting back so many things, we're still 40 cents over the budget. Yes. OK, what else do I take out? At this point, I'm looking through the bags and I see garlic and I have this Epiphany. Take half the garlic off. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Let's break the garlic in half and only get half of the garlic so we can be under budget. Good on your visor, we need you. So now the challenge has really begun. And the first thing I do is try and find our ingredients. Got... Where's our flour? I'll grab it from over. You've got the herbs? Have you got the herbs? herbs? Come on, give me the cell. What's, what are we having for dinner? We're having, do you What's know what the cell lunch? is? When we took this over, what we realised in about 10 minutes is three mothers had stepped in and taken over. Uh, and the three mums were cooking the favourite dishes yep. that their kids love. Oh, look yeah. And that's what that's sells great. it, you know? I'm yeah. cooking my yeah. kids' favourite dessert. Dinner. A beautiful yeah. traditional lemon tart yeah. with a raspberry yeah. coulis. For main course, Samira's doing a, a Middle Eastern dish of chicken, yoghurt and almonds. Yeah. It's one of her traditional dishes. And then for entree, we've okay, got so a mum here who's cooking her kids' favourite pasta. Yeah, so we've all, we're all doing our family's favourite dishes. I'm making fresh pasta dough for our entree. I've got Noli, Nada and Visa cooking with me. We're just doing a fettuccine with oil and chilli. Um, just as a little starter, she'll go with the rest of our family meal. I'm making for the jazz, family favourite, which is chicken with a yoghurt and nut topping. I was 12 the first time I cooked this dish and my brother goes, do you know how to make it? And I go, oh, yeah, didn't want to show him I didn't know how to make it. And I food poisoned his whole family. <laughs> I fed them raw chicken. And I learned to master this dish before coming into the show so I don't poison any of the judges. Oh my God, that smells so good. Thank you. Come on girls, let's keep the energy up. Okay, how's our tarts going? We're making a lemon tart for dessert. It's been baking in the oven now for about 20, 30 minutes but they still haven't set. Yeah, they're not yeah, no, they're not set. And I'm about to have a nervous breakdown, I think. Oh, I have never had a tart not set. Did you put in sugar? Yeah, we put everything we put in. put everything in, didn't we? Freaking out, you know, the tarts should be setting and they're not setting. It's all right, just, just believe, trust. So Em and I decide that the only thing to do is to pray. Please. <laughs> Please, little please. oven. <laughs> please, can you please set? They look super organised. The Middle Eastern inspired dish using the chicken, that could be really, really yummy. We can put the right amount of broth here so they know how much to put yeah, instead of great. making it all soggy. That's great. Dessert, um, have they cooked the pastry enough? Will that custard set? The fettuccine, I'm interested to see how they're going to actually present that family style. But also, it sounds like the sauce they're making is one of those when you want to do a bit of tossing in the pan. And I wonder whether that pasta is going to stand up to any heavy yeah. action in the pan. It's really fun. Yeah, totally. We're just going to have to wait and see. Water's on. Water's on. Water's Crisps are done. Yes. The entree that we're making is Liliana's creation. And I think she's really struggling. I don't want to burn the garlic, but it needs to have that flavour. She's trying to do too much. I don't want to leave it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm not good at actually delegating and letting go. Let me say, quick, quick. It's Ready, hot. Take off. Just put a little bit more in that. I have three pots of pasta, all cooking for a different length of time. Get the other one off. 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 This is the Liliana. Get one off. Get that off. The danger here is that this pasta, it's a delicate, fragile thing, so it's easy to overcook. Hot pot! Take it off. Let's go. Hot. We're at the point where the pasta needs to be drained and it needs that oil on it straight away or it's going to stick together. Let's go. Tong it through for me. And I literally tip the whole pan of garlic oil and I just start tonging it through. Right, and we need to throw that parsley in. Put it on the plate. And it sort of just breaks apart. Is it a little bit overcooked? Oh, girls, I've got this in the bag. Um, Looks it. That was always going to be the challenge. It's cooking 14 of them yeah. without mushing it all up. And every time you smash those tongs into the pasta, yeah. it makes it worse. I am feeling like crap. Is it worth me being here if I can't even put up a plate of pasta? Do you want to come and have a look? I'm scared. No. I'm scared too. We're about to pull our tarts out of the oven. The dessert team's freaking out. I'm going to be sick. How does it look? Oh, set. Nice, nice. The tarts have set. They did that last minute thing where they take a while to heat and then bang. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, girls, that's beautiful. The relief in our team is just 
beyond words. I love you. <laughs> okay, we need to get a wriggle on, guys. No naked tarts in this kitchen. This is your first 10 seconds in the MasterChef kitchen. Come on, boys. Finish up. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's your family. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. That's it. Time's up. Looking forward to this. Yeah. Gentlemen, enjoy a hand cut fettuccine with the anchovy chili fresh parsley oil with a parmesan crisp for a little crunch. Bon appetit. I think it looks very nice. I can smell the anchovy. It's super thin and a little bit overcooked. Actually, overcooked, yeah. I'm with you. I like my pasta a bit thicker and just, just al dente. Well, that's the girls' entree. Let's see what the red team have done with their main course. Round two. Hey. This dish is called Fateh Jaj. It's a Middle Eastern Lebanese dish. It's basically fried flatbread with fried and boiled chicken with a yogurt topping, a broth and fried off nuts. Okay, see ya. Thank you. <laughs> that was so nerve wracking. <sighs> Good teamwork again. Yeah. Those working with her, well done. It's something I love. I just hope they love it. They will. I'm sure they will. That is delicious. That's rock and roll, isn't it? Yeah. Very good. Oh, I love that. Those crunchy almonds on top. Yogurt, bit of spice. Really good. I really, really like it, actually. The boys on this table are worried now. Yeah. yeah. No, I this think is good. People, people here don't want to talk, they just want to eat. Yeah. Anyone feel like some dessert? Oh, yes, please. Oh, yeah. Oh. Looks a bit better than ours. You're right. <laughs> You're actually right, it does. Jules, don't pick on Dan. He started it, as usual. Tell us what the dessert is. We dished up a classic lemon tart with a raspberry coulis. I'm going to ask you the question that Gary's going to ask you, which is, where's the cream? Um, we had a couple of issues at the supermarket earlier today, and <laughs> after the boxing gloves came out, the, um, the dessert got compromised on. So the cream and the ice cream went back. Between you and me, Jules, do you think it needs cream? No. Maybe a little. Maybe a dollop. Mm. OK, yeah. So, but, you know, we're pretty comfortable with what we've served up. Thank you. Enjoy, boys. We thought you could do with a little bit of tart. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys did such an amazing job with the little ingredients that yeah. you had. Thank you. you know, it looked cream, fantastic. No cream. Seriously, it was, it was, it was restaurant tasty. quality. It looked fantastic. Tell me what you think. It's Citron Defcon 5 right now. Just, it's citrus overload. OK. But yep. it's good, isn't it? Lemon tart, that's what it's all about. Yeah, just missing the... Missing you want something, something to smooth it out. Yeah, yeah. You know, the cream, the creme fraiche. Yep, love it. Just missing that. Well, congratulations. That's the first day of MasterChef under your belt. Huh? This is all about the battle of the sexes. And the challenge today was to cook a beautiful dinner for 14 people your MasterChef family on a tight budget. So let's look at how you went as far as we saw it. Girls, your dessert looks spectacular on the plate, but it needed cream. Your main course, Samira, you're worried? Mm-hmm, yes. You shouldn't be, because it was the dish of the day. How does that make you feel? Yeah, good, good. It was a, it was a group effort, so it wasn't all just on me. But um, now I'm wrapped. Thanks. You're about to make a meal on a very tight budget. You'll be going into the pantry, which we've converted into a mini supermarket, and you'll have $10 to buy all the ingredients you need to make a meal of your choice. 
$15. Okay. We have two fridges. We have a stand of fresh produce and a stand of groceries. You have $10 and 30 minutes to produce the meal of your choice. Global recession is amongst us. People are being a little bit more smarter in the way they buy, in the way they shop. You need to understand food costs and how much a dish costs to put on a plate. This would help you going into the future if you really want to be a chef. I do realise that I'm the only person that's got one of the proteins, so the fish, the chicken, the meat. I'm not sure how that's going to go for me. Time's up. Got one cent left. Whoa. <laughs> that's what you call shopping. You now have 30 minutes to turn your vision of the perfect budget meal into a reality. Your time starts now. I decided to go with this salmon with cannellini bean puree. I've done a bit of practice with filleting fish. I'm still not perfect at it by any means, but I'm not hacking at it <laughs> like I probably used to. I've got a clear idea in my head of how I want it to look, so I'm not faffing about. I really felt like I pushed myself. This combination of flavours I've never done before. Yeah, none of the plates concern me, but I still don't, haven't seen Julia's and haven't seen Lucas's either, so don't know what to expect from those two. And they are the two that I'm worried about. You're not playing anymore, you're fighting. Get that thing on the plate. That's it, guys. Step away from your stoves. Good job. Well done. Julia, lucky last. Would you like to bring your plate up? It's been a really long time since I've had to have my food judged in that way, so it sort of all comes rushing back. I'm like, ooh, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this. <laughs> I love that crispy golden skin from the salmon. It's got that lovely sort of roasty caramel flavour, which I love. The white bean puree, it's smooth. You've got a touch of garlic in there. So it's a lovely sort of rounded, you know, luscious flavour. Thank you, Gary. Simplicity, elegance, delicate, delicious. This is why you're a true contender at winning this competition. You should be very proud of yourself. It does make me feel that I do deserve to be here a bit more and that I am going to be able to make it through a few more challenges, hopefully. A brand new week in the MasterChef kitchen and a brand new mystery box. The magic of cooking is all about taking simple ingredients to create delicious dishes. We've been telling you, don't overcomplicate things. We're gonna show you how less really is more. <laughs> you ready to find out what's underneath your lids? Oh. You can lift the lids now. This is the MasterChef dollar box. Every ingredient in this box costs a dollar or less. Whether it's the $1 of chicken wings, the $1 lemon, the 75 cents of dry ginger ale, the dollar of black olives, 75 cents of pear, the 95 cents of salami, 75 cents of beans, the 85 cents of peanuts, three onions for a dollar, what a bargain and the can of cannellini beans for 80 cents. It's a weird bunch of ingredients, but we have to create a high-class meal. That's really amped up the pressure. I'm gonna to have to work really hard today to make sure I get a, a great dish up for the judges. It's about doing what all great chefs should do. It's about spinning gold out of straw, proving 
that amazing food doesn't have to come from amazing high-end ingredients. Are you ready? Yep. Yep. Your time starts now. Six weeks in, we've given them open pantries, we've given them gardens laden full of beautiful ingredients. This is going to be a challenge for them. Yeah. Tightening the leash, George. This box is designed to show us who are the everyday cooks yeah. and who are the exceptional cooks. Absolutely. Seeing these cheap ingredients that we're using today, I really want to put my spin to it and make it look spectacular. There's a lot of pressure because only three dishes are going to be tasted and I'm going to have to work a lot harder. So today I've decided to make um, your traditional Filipino desserts and it's called Halo Halo. Halo Halo is the cheap version of an ice cream. I grew up on this basically because we couldn't afford ice cream and on a hot day, it's just perfect. Normally in Halo Halo, you'd have red beans, purple yam paste, and bananas. My biggest concern is I don't have them today. I'm gonna to be really experimental and use the pear, peanuts, and also the cannelloni beans to create the flavor that I grew up with. It is a risk, but I'm really pushing myself. I've got 15 minutes to go, and I need to start working on my granita. The way I'm gonna make it is with some ice cubes, and blend through the fresh milk. So, John, another Filipino dish. It is, yes. Um, what are you making? So, I'm making halo halo. You've got no tropical fruits. You've got really nothing that makes halo 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 halo. No. And halo halo is all about tropical fruits. I mean, although it's supposed to be something you just throw together. It is, yes. What I've got today in the mystery box is pears. Yep. So, I'm using some, yep. um, some of the poached pears. I've got peanuts, which I'm going to use as a crunch elements. I'm going to make peanut brittle. I've also got the cannellini beans, which I've cooked in a syrup. Are you going to use crushed ice, or like the original, or are you going to make a... I'm making a milk granita for this one. Have you of reduced the milk first to give it that kind of evaporated saltiness? No, or... I haven't. Maybe I should. Just thinking. Just thinking. I would think to myself, why have I done this? Why have I cooked halo halo without the ingredients that I need? Without the evaporated milk, I'm a little bit worried that my dish could end up tasting bland because I'm using fresh milk and it's not going to taste like the halo halo I grew up with. This dish needs another element to give it its full flavour. I'm adding tocino de cielo, which is a really rich creme brulee, basically sugar and egg yolks. I'm worried about the flavours of the milk because um, normally you have evaporated milk, which is a really concentrated milk flavour. I've got the really rich creme brulee, so I hope that flavour together with the granita will create that same flavour of the evaporated milk that we're normally adding to the dish. Uh -huh. Come on! Ten seconds. Nine. Eight. Eight. Seven. Six. Five, four, three, two, one, cool down. That's it. <laughs> Looks great. <sighs> we told you the competition was getting harder, harder for you to stand out and harder for us to pick which dishes to taste. We could have picked Jackie. You did so much with so little time. However... <laughs> There was just one dish we couldn't go past who stood up there with Matthews and George's. And that's John's. It's a Filipino dessert. It's called Halo Halo. It looks spectacular, honestly. Looking forward to it. peanuts, nothing that would go in a traditional halo halo. Yeah. That's why I love this dish. Love it. 
I absolutely love the dish. I think it's clever, it's creative, it's interesting, particularly that little dense custard, the ginger, the sweet syrup. The question is, is it going to be good enough to take out the challenge? Thank you. Okay. This morning I've learned to basically cook from the heart. It's food that I've grown up with and the judges love it. And I think moving forward in this competition, I'm just going to cook from my heart, follow my instinct and cook food that I love.